Chico's outdoor booth. Let's go and take a look. Nice to meet you, man. How you doing? <laughs> nice to meet you. I know I've seen you. Yeah, well, I was. I at just the... don't rec. I don't recognize. Yep, I was at the trimmer station last year. Okay. But all right. All right. So what we have over here is our uh, TM2000. It's our autonomous mower. Um, it can mow up to six acres. It, it's autonomous, so it's designed with a, uh, a perimeter wire around the field. The perimeter wire creates an electromagnetic field. And that's the, the, the field that the robot operates in. Um, it's designed not to go out that boundary. Uh, as soon as the robot crosses that wire, it realizes it's not there. Uh, we'll take a look at it over here. So in the guts of this unit, we have five floating heads. Each head has three blades. That's all that's used to cut the grass. Again, these are floating. And they're all independent of each other, so that helps with when it's traversing the terrain, it's actually getting a nice even cut. This is the sensor that detects the magnetic field. The perimeter wire. Up here we have our bumper. So how this works is we have five sonars on the unit, and what that that does is, as the robot senses a large object, it'll slow down and then it'll use the bumper to make contact with that object and then it knows I need to avoid that. It turns around and goes away. So if you want, I'll fire it up for you. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and send it to the station. heading over to the charging station right now basically or it's docking yep, yep. station so what it's doing is it's, it's it's searching for the end of the field once it finds the end of the field when it recognizes it it's gonna make a turn and then there's another another boundary wire buried in the ground we call that our station loop and what that does is it lets the robot know that you're close to the charging station and that's why what helps it dock so what it's doing right now is it's making sure it sees exactly what it needs to see. It's looking for that, that wire. It's going to ride that wire all the way until it makes contact with the charging station. Once it makes charging with the contact station, it'll stop. So now it's charging. What it does when it gets to the charging station is the cutting heads will reverse at a, the max RPM of the unit, and it actually cleans off the whole cutting head system um, so that it reduces that buildup. So how, how, what's the height of the grass that this can cut? So this can go up to four inches um, and as low as uh, a quarter of an inch. About how, what's the height that it cuts at whenever it, uh, it so runs kind of continuously. It runs continuously, so it's really only cutting off a very, very small fraction of grass. Um, and the, the, the process behind that is that once you're cutting off that, just that little bit of grass, that grass goes back in the ground, natural fertilizer, it breaks down a lot quicker because the bulk 
the, the, the mulching ability is a lot, it's a lot smaller. Um, it also doesn't give the chance for the weeds that pop up to grow, so it reduces the dandelion population. It's designed to work 24-7 day and night because it's super quiet, it's all electric. It can run rain or shine uh, in the rain. You know, unless you're unless you're getting two or three inches of downpour, you know, you're gonna want to park it then. But if it's a light rain in the morning, it's designed to work. So right now, what's the applications that this is this particular piece of equipment is geared for? Right now, obviously, uh, you know, larger par parcels of land. Um, it's really geared towards sports fields, uh, sports turfs, soccer fields, football fields, baseball fields with a smaller unit, um, corporate campuses, um, large estates um, that have, you know, obviously the multiple acres. Um, but sports fields is what they were originally designed for. Um, the unique thing about our unit is when you have some of those sports complexes that have multiple fields next to each other, you can actually wire two fields together and as one's being used, the robot can go work in the other unused field and then when that field needs to be used, it can go work. It also works on a schedule, so you can schedule it where if you've got a lot of activities going on in the day, um, it'll schedule around irrigation, so it's fully programmable, so it can work around your schedule. Now, where, where do you see, you know, this technology headed for homeowner applications? Echo, you know, got a plan that they may have? Not really. More with the commercial, um, you know, there, there, there are many of our competitors have, you know, the smaller homeowner units. Uh, we want to stay in that commercial, that commercial landscape, if you will. And you know, it's designed to work with the landscapers. It's not designed to take anybody's job. Because you, you still need human intervention with the robot. And you know, what crews can do now is they can send a guy out with a trimmer and a blower, go check on the robot, blow it off, check the blades trim around the perimeter and then move on to the next site. So now all of a sudden your crews are more efficient, they're covering you know, more accounts. Um, professional landscapers should lease these out to their customers, they can sell them you know, through the customer. Um, and then it's just maintaining those and then you guys can focus on your value add, you know, mulching, hardscaping, you know, all, those other, all those other value add um, opportunities and not have to worry so much about the mowing. What type of a price point are we looking at on a, a piece of equipment like this? So the mower itself um, is about $15,500 for the larger unit. It's $9,900 for the smaller unit. Um, dealer installed uh, on the bigger unit, you're looking around $20. Um, charging station separate, but that's all included in that like install price. So the idea is, you know, it's got a two-year warranty. These things are very durable solid aluminum or aluminum construction with uh, all the stuff underneath. Uh, very durable plastic shell. You can dock on both sides. Um, adheres to safety standards. So it's got a two year warranty, but what is the potential life life expectancy of it? Uh, you know, it's just like any other piece of equipment. Right, yeah, I mean, it's just like any other equipment, any, like your automobile. If you take care of it, it's gonna last a long time. Um, honestly, the biggest, I would say the limitation, if you will, is the battery. Um, it's a lithium ion battery, so that's gonna have a lifespan. It, it functions in extreme temperatures, um, so that would probably be the breaking point. Um, you know, we, we could foresee the, 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 the unit with the battery lasts in about five years, and then you might have to replace the battery. Um, but again, if you're taking care of it, there's no reason, you know, it's, it's a very simplistic piece of equipment. Um, it's got five independent motors. Um, you know, as, as things go bad and wear out, you can replace them. Um, but as long as you're treating the unit well and maintaining it, it could last a long time. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. I think, uh, you know, it's definitely the way of the future. It's just the way things are going to go. Yeah, you there's know, it's... No, there's no it, way around it, and it's not a bad thing. No. You just have to be able to be seen down the road. Yep. You see down the road and know where things are headed, you know? Yeah, you just got to embrace... And again, it's not for everybody. I mean, it doesn't strive, you know, it, it's... It, but that's, it's not designed to, right? It's, it's designed, designed to, to maintain. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. How's the show been for you? Pretty good? Yeah, the show's been pretty good. Really, I mean, it's, it's just, so, there's always so much to try and, yeah, try and do.
Hey, thanks a lot for being here.